1983, the famous movie Scarface came out and the famous words were said, don't get high off your own supply. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I spit to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know what time it is. So until I suburban, we're about to take a ride. What's up guys? Yes, don't get high off your own supply. Pay that no mind, cause JC got high off of everybody's supply. I think that was like the number one thing that Kato and like the twins hated about me. Not hated, just disliked it that they looked at me as being up there and like always being coked out, always being drunk. It, it was just, you know, it wasn't good. They didn't get high. They didn't they didn't really drink nothing. Like they just, you know, Kato smoked weed. The twins didn't do nothing. So it was like I was the outcast. I was the addict. <laughs> You know, so you guys know the story. When I first moved out to Arizona to get away, I came out here with a pretty big chunk of money. 190K, two trucks, a Mercedes Benz, a Hayabusa motorcycle, and all my jewelry. My jewelry was worth, say about 70 grand with a couple of chinchilla coats in there. In six, six to seven months, I was completely flat broke. I had already started a relationship with the mother of my daughter out here so she was already pregnant you know i moved fast back then she was already pregnant i was still up to no good i was still smoking crack you know once i got to arizona i started smoking more crack because there was nobody around to kind of police me there was there was no none of the brothers were out here nobody was seeing what i was doing so i felt like i get i could get away with more stuff so i started doing it a lot i remember i used to like just sit there all day while my baby's mom was at work and I would just be smoking, smoking my brains out, watching porn, jerking off, like just crazy addict shit, you know, and smoking cigarettes. And by the time she would get home, I would have all the house aired out, you know, sprayed, you know, so you can smell it. And that's what I did. I, I lived that life for years until I went completely flat broke. Then I had to find a job. <sighs> yeah. I didn't want to go to construction, so I got a job at U-Haul. My bus ride there was the longest bus ride ever. Not even me living in Chicago as a kid did I ever take the bus. I always rode my bike uh, or got rides, you know, I never took the bus. And when I got on the bus that day, I, I broke down crying. Like I moved out here with all that money to supposedly open up a business, do good, changing my life and, and all these good things, right? And they ended up being really bad things because my, my demons, my addiction, everything caught up to me. I was still using drugs like I was making money in Chicago and I wasn't here. So I blew through that money like nothing. I mean, people couldn't even believe that I was broke already. I started to cry on the bus that day on my first day to work because I was like, how the fuck did I go from, you know, selling keys, keys, uh, <laughs> keys and hanging around with, with all these big time motherfuckers to me parking trucks? at U-Haul. Well, 
That's what happens with addiction. That's what happens when you get high off your own supply. And that what happens when you have stuff inside of you that you're not dealing with. I'm not a walk in the park. It's taken me a long time to get to where I'm at. You could ask my wife about that one. She'll tell you the truth. It's not easy, but it can be done. The biggest thing is being honest with yourself and actually telling yourself like, shit, man, I have a fucking problem, man. Like, if I can't do certain things, you know, I'm losing my mind. So technically that's an addiction, you know what I mean? And it could be anything. It could be drugs, it could be drinking, it could be women or men. <laughs> it, it could be anything, even money, excitement, even, even that rush you would get when you were like shooting at people on the streets. That's, that's turns into an addiction too. Trust me, I know. It's not easy. It's not easy to change, but it can be done. And it's gonna get way worse before it gets any better. But that's the thing is you constantly have to keep doing it. Honestly, at the end of the day, these videos have helped me more than anything because it's been like my, my counselor, it's been like my, my diary, it's been the screen for me to share my pains, my tribulations, my, uh, excitements, well, my wins, everything, and I get to share them with you guys. That's what makes it beautiful, man, because I get to tell you guys my story. I get to tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that there is better things out there than gang banging, doing drugs. I, I never thought that I would be this happy being sober, and I never thought I would be, I thought I was going to be like a cheater for the rest of my life, like I just thought it was normal, like you know, I, I, you would have your girl at home and then you had another one on the streets and that's how it was and I was wrong. I was wrong. Today, I'm happy with the one woman that I have in my life. Like I said, I'm not easy to deal with. I have obviously a lot of trauma that I have to constantly work on, but she stuck it out and she stayed with me through the ups and downs and I love her for that. It's hard to find someone that can understand you when you've been through a lot. Because I tried it at the beginning when I first came home from prison. I tried to be with uh, this person that had no connection to me whatsoever. She went to a, you know, a prestige college and, and had parents that were doctors and money and all this stuff. And she didn't, couldn't understand my, my traumas, my stuff, my, my why I acted certain ways, why I sat certain ways. I mean, it is what it is, man. You, you can't blame them, you know? It, just because you need help doesn't mean that other people, you have to bleed on other people, you know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is that you have to at least try to get better. Because if you don't, then it keeps getting worse. And you keep bleeding on other people, burning bridges, hurting people, and you keep going and doing destruction, chaos. You keep going and going and going. And to actually sit down and tell yourself, shit, man, I have a problem. I know for a fact that I can't go into a bar and have one drink. Because one will turn into 10 and 10 will turn into 100. And then I'll be fighting. Same thing with drugs. I'll throw everything out the door. Everything. So I know not to do that now. And you get, it doesn't get easier. You just get better at doing it. And you get better at stopping and actually thinking about what decision you're going to make. Because before all the decisions were emotional. Everything I did was mad or more mad. Or I'm going to get even. So, yeah, that day when I took that bus to the U-Haul station, I sat there and I cried the whole ride there. We were living in Mesa, and I took the uh, Alma School all the way down to Southern. And, you know, my job was to check in the U-Haul trucks after people brought them in, park them, clean them, and I was getting paid 11 bucks an hour. You know, and this is how I know that no matter what was going on in my life, like I really never really just gave up. Like I, I, I put my ego to the side lots of times and I worked many, many jobs. You guys would actually be surprised what I worked at, but every job that I've had, I've always managed to climb to the top and be the boss. I ain't taking orders from fucking nobody. <laughs> Just, that's JC. Hey. You have to be, you have to want to change and you have to be tired of living that life that you're living in order to change. This is why I share my stories. I tell you the facts. I tell you how it is the real deal because you have a lot of people, man, I hate to say it nowadays, are on social media and they're glamorizing a lot of this prison life, a lot of these, uh, like, 
shootings and all this shit and and it, it's not what it's cut out to be trust me i lived it on both sides here in mexico and i've seen some of the most dangerous prisons it's not worth it guys i'm lucky i made it here i'm lucky to be here i'm blessed to be alive i'm blessed to be free i'm blessed to actually be healing and getting better so with that being said just be wrong and strong man just try it just one time you will thank me in the long run hey my name's jc i am wrong and strong don't judge nobody stay in your lane live savage and remember you only have one life to live homie live it out here free not gang banging not doing drugs not doing stupid shit that you're gonna regret i'll catch you guys on the rebound